In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my top five tips for you to be able to improve overnight in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name's Cody and I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're brand new to the channel and you don't know what I do, basically what I do here on YouTube is I do Madden 21 tips and tricks, basically break down every day how can you get better on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball. Now, we post four videos every single day, so if you have not subscribed yet and research shows that only about 40% of the people that are gonna watch this video have actually subscribed to my channel you can subscribe right now completely for free and you can also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of these important uploads and tips and strategies we try to break down the best tips in the community here on our youtube channel work really hard to not only break down my tips and strategies when i do but also try to learn from other people and what they do as well. So we study pro players. So if you're looking to get better on both sides of the ball, I would highly encourage you to consider go ahead and click that subscribe button. Now, what I'm going to be talking about today is my top five tips that can help you improve on the defensive side of the ball. And specifically what we're going to be talking about is truly how you can take your defense to a new level overnight. So it's not going to be any super, super schematic things. We're going to talk a little bit more conceptual and just give you the tools that I think you need the kind of game plan and really plan for how you're going to be able to lock down on the defensive side of the ball. Now, really quickly, the number one tip that I have for you as far as how you can get better on defense is to actually simplify your defense. And what I mean by that is have a plan, have a simple plan of execution, meaning what are the two to three to five cover core coverages that you're going to call? Are you going to go to cover four, cover two, cover three? Are you going to, what adjustments are you going to make? Have a plan because if you have, if you kind of know what you're going to do ahead of time, you're going to be able to execute it as a, at a much faster rate. Like right here, this is my base setup against this cover or against kind of what he's been doing on the offensive side of the ball. So I already know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go out and execute. So when you simplify and you're not trying to think about it on the fly, Use this time right here to kind of plan what you're going to do. Um, in my opinion, really does. It sounds like a super simple thing, but it makes all the difference in the world. Because then when you get on the field, then you're not having to try to think about what am I going to call? What what am I going to need to do against this, this, or this? Now, uh, and, and a good question to be able to ask that helps us a lot. I believe you only need about three formations at max to be able to really be effective uh, on the defensive side of the ball. So about three formations is what I would recommend. And then what I would also say is if you, if you can kind of plan out of those three formations to really stick to about maybe 10 or so, maybe 10 to 15 plays, that is really going to help you a ton because you're going to know kind of how to set those plays up. And then from there, there's a saying that I really like that says defense is simply adjustments right? Defense is simply adjustments. So from there, then you're going to have the margin in the play and you're going to have the time because you've already set this up over and over and over again to be able to set your defense up and then adjust if he's doing this or doing that or what his tendencies are. So simplify your defense. Another good question to ask is what are the 20% of plays that I call in a game? What are the 20% of things that I call from a coverage perspective or from a blitz perspective that produces about 80% of my desired results? So about 80% of my stops can come from when I call this or that or whatever it might be. Those are questions that I think you really do need to ask yourself on the defensive side of the ball. It's going to help you kind of do an 80-20 analysis of your, of your defense, and you're going to be super, super effective for it. The next tip is to make everything look the same. Uh, to me, it is super, super, super important um, to make everything look the same because if you don't, then what's going to happen is it's going to be very easy for the offense to kind of already know what you're doing. So I always come out and basically press coverage. I always come out and shift my defensive line to the side of the running back. I always do X, Y, and Z. Every single play has to look the same. Your run defense has to look the same as your pass defense. Your blitzes have to look the same as your coverages. If they don't, it's going to be really, really hard, uh, in my opinion, to be able to be effective long term, um, just simply based on the fact that it's way too easy to kind of start to cue in on what what the uh, what the offense is really doing. Um, so in my opinion, that is one of the most important things that I can tell you is when you're playing defense, you really want to make everything look exactly the same. Um, and it's really going to help because he's not going to know if you're blitzing or if you're in coverage or whatever it might be. 
Okay, so that to me is a super, super important uh, tip that can really, really help you a ton in this game. The next thing, and we'll jump into another game here in just a second. The next thing that I would say is you want to focus on your red zone defense. Now, uh, most people that play defense, they try to, in my opinion, a lot of times, and I'm super guilty of this myself, you try to do a little bit too much, right? You, you try to do a little bit too much on the defensive side of the ball. You try to stop everything as opposed to stopping the main thing. Remember, tendencies are so important when you're playing Madden, and you don't have to stop everything. All you simply have to do, and this is where I kind of try to have one big picture goal when I go into a first drive or a second drive in a game, is all I have to do, if I just hold my opponent to three points instead of seven consistently, I will win every single game. That's what my That's my belief. That's my belief on the defensive side of the ball. We've seen it proven time and time again. You watch NFL, you watch college, you watch high school, you watch Madden. It's all true throughout all football. It really comes down to holding your opponent to field goals as opposed to touchdowns and making them drive up and down the field. If you're giving up one play touchdowns every time, it's going to be really, really hard for you to be able to be a consistent defensive player. And so in my opinion, it makes a ton, a ton, a ton of sense to try to focus on holding them to field goals rather than touchdowns. So how do you do that practically? The way you do that is by identifying and creating a defense that has coverages that are designed to not get burned over the top. For example, if you're running a cover three, it makes a lot of sense to deep half your outside thirds because it's going to help you not get burned over the top of the defense. Another thing that might be a good example is if you're running man-to-man -man coverage, you might want to keep your safeties deep as opposed to putting them in purple zones because a lot of people have figured out different ways to glitch out man coverage at this point in the year, things like that. So focusing on those, those little key things I think are super, super effective. Also, um, also what I will say is we actually have some really, really good red zone defenses. The big nickel over G, in my opinion, is one of the best, if not the best defense for red zone style of defense. And so we actually, um, in our text message membership, which you might be asking what my text message membership is, and I'll get to that in just a second. But in our text message membership, we actually released an entire um, two hour video series on the big nickel over G defense, kind of breaking down how do you run it, what are your adjustments, and all of those things. So if you want to get that defense, it is literally in my text message membership. All you have to do to pick it up is simply just text me. If you just text me, my number is in the top left-hand corner of your screen. I will shoot you a link to that. That playlist, that text membership, actually is a full playlist. It's got over 11 videos. And what we do is every single week, we break down new de offensive and defensive schemes for you guys in that text message playlist for you. So every week, you're going to get new stuff. So last week, we did Strong Close. Week before that, I think we did Far Tight Slot from the West Coast Playbook. Um, we've done Big Nickel over G. We're getting ready to do a brand new defense, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute um, from that. But if you want to sign up, it's completely free. Just shoot me a text message. Um, and my number is in the left-hand corner. It's also in the description below. My next tip for you is, as a general rule, one of the things that I like to do is I always like to use the middle linebacker or the middle of the field. Okay, so it might be the middle safety, it might be the middle linebacker. Um, it might, you know, it does definitely vary um, who I use or depending on the formation. But where I use her really doesn't change. I'm pretty much always wanting to use her on the middle of the field, and the reason why is because it allows me to do the most. It allows me to be involved in most of the things. Things. Um, and, and what I mean by that is I can literally lurk two to three to maybe even four possible routes that people could go to over the middle of the field in a one play scenario, right? Because it, depending on where they run their routes, and some of that is, you know, you know, you can't always predict that, but most people um, don't have great routes to the outside. Most people's primary routes are post routes or um, streak routes or crossing routes or things like that. And so if I can use her some of that stuff, that really does help my defense a lot. A lot of slants this year, a lot of post routes, a lot of curl routes, all of those kind of things. 
that's what my user can take away. And so by using in the middle of the field, I allow myself to really have a good opportunity to be able to be very effective against that. And I also allow myself a really good opportunity, you know, to basically be super, super effective in the run game as well. So that's what I would recommend. I would always recommend using the middle of the field. Wouldn't necessarily recommend using like an outside corner or anything like that, unless you have a very specific idea and a very specific plan. That's kind of what I would do. And that's what I would recommend. Start using either the middle linebacker or the middle safety. And I think you'll see a lot of improvement on your defense. Also, whenever you're using someone, make sure that as a general rule, unless you're doing different user rush tactics and things like that, that you are putting them on a blitz. The reason you want to put them on a blitz is twofold. Number one, you're going to get better block sheds with your defensive linemen if they are on a blitz because the offensive line is going to recognize that there is more than three or four people blitzing in a play. There's five, maybe six, depending on how many you're sending. And also it's going to allow you to have a little bit of a faster user um, in your defense. Now, the last tip that I have for you is actually kind of a deep one and it is use safeties at linebacker. And this is actually why I base most of my defense out of the nickel 335 and the nickel 335 wide. I actually just wrote an, a, a defensive guide uh, on this defense. And basically what I talk about in this is the importance of doing that, the importance of this personnel grouping. The reason why it's so important to use safeties at linebacker is because linebackers don't always react to the ball. And what I mean by that is I have faced people who are using linebackers or they have linebackers in coverage and I've thrown right at the linebacker and the linebacker doesn't react to the ball. For whatever reason, in this year's game, EA basically designed it so that primarily linebackers are not going to be very good in pass coverage. So if you're putting linebackers on your field, you pretty much always want to be blitzing them. Um, in my opinion, you don't want to be dropping them very often because they're literally not going to jump the ball. Unless it's a flat route, they're really not going to jump. They're not going to they're not going to intercept crossing routes and post routes and things like that. They're also don't just, they also simply don't have the man coverage to be able to keep up with some of the better uh, route running type of players it, that the game can offer. So the reason that that matters is because what you're going to see and what you're going to notice happen is they're going to get burnt in man coverage. Oftentimes they're not going to react in zone. And so for that reason, that's why the nickel three, three, five is so powerful um, because you get the best personnel possible on the field. And I've been talking about this from the, since the beginning of Madden 21 and I actually just wrote a full defensive ebook, which is just 15 bucks. You can pick it up in the description. Almost every pro that I know is running some version of this defense right now, just because of how powerful the personnel really is from this formation. But if you want to pick up the ebook, it's in the link in the description. A lot of people picked it up and have been having a lot of success. It's the most simple ebook I've ever written. I actually applied all of these five tips to that. I actually show you how to stop different runs in the red zone, different plays in the red zone. And I also show you great personnel groupings, how to simplify. We only cover a couple of key plays that are really, really effective. So if you want to pick that ebook up, that link is in the description. But my last tip is to make sure that you're putting safeties at linebacker. You're going to find that you're not going to get weak boxed if you use the nickel 335. You will get weak boxed if you use like the dime 146. So that's something else you need to kind of consider. But by you putting linebackers um, in the field, uh, on the field, maybe a defensive end, that's one thing, but don't put them on the field as linebackers. They're not going to respond in zone coverage. They're not going to respond in man coverage. They're not going to intercept things. The only way that I would ever use a linebacker is if I was using him and he had the lurker ability. So with that being said, those are my top five tips for you to be able to improve on the defensive side of the ball and completely lock people down. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. We will be streaming tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. If you have any Madden questions whatsoever, you can always text me. My number is 812-216-3644. And if you're interested in picking up that defensive ebook, that link is in the description. I want to thank you for watching today's video, and we'll see you on tonight's live stream.